Welcome everyone to this presentation of Beginning the Cisco Journey. I'm Keith Bogart and I'm going to be your presenter for today. Uh, this is brought to you on behalf of INE. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about today's show and what we're going to be doing here. Uh, for those of you who have not uh, taken any courses from me before or seen any of my videos, just give a little spiel here about myself. So as you can see, my name is Keith Bogart. Uh, got sort of an interesting look on my face in that photo there, but hey, I didn't choose that. Um, you can see my contact information there. So uh, after the show is done, or if you're ever watching any of my other videos and you have a question or you need some clarification, uh, you've got three ways to reach out to me there. You can shoot me an email directly. Uh, the second method is via Twitter. I would love to have you connect with me on Twitter. And then the third method is via LinkedIn. So there's a variety of ways to reach out uh, if you have any questions after this show is done, or for any of my CCNA or CCNP videos as well. Would love to hear from you. So let's talk about today. First of all, beginning the Cisco journey, what prerequisites are required? Well, the prerequisites for today's show are none, none, and none. In other words, you're watching this, you got a computer, check. Uh, you have some sort of an internet connection, check. Uh, and you have eyeballs to he see and ears to hear. Check. So you've got everything you need um, for the show today. So this is really a, a nuts and bolts starting at ground zero presentation on, uh, on beginning the Cisco journey. So what am I going to do? Uh, so I've got one slide left and then that's it for slides. No other slides. So course overview. So as you saw in the course description, uh, there's some basic stuff I'm going to do. Discuss the basics of networking. And I'm just going to do that as it comes to me, as we go and we build a network. I'm going to talk about some terminology and some things about you know what networking is. Uh, I'm going to do a live demonstration of a wired network, and I'll show you that piece by piece as I go along setting something up from scratch. I'm going to take you through the steps of laying out and wiring and interconnecting the hardware components of a real basic network. Um, this is going to be very free flowing. It's not like a lot of my other presentations where I got a preset agenda with slides laid out and everything like that. Uh, I'm just going to be building something from scratch. A lot of it's going to be done from the top of my head as we go along. And we're just going to start from ground zero. Okay, so let's start out. Um, so I want to build a network. And you know, let, whether I'm talking about myself or you, you want to build a network. You know, first of all, what do we need a network for? What's the purpose of a network? Well, it's because I have two computing devices. Let's just make it simple. Two laptops or a laptop and a server. Basically, two computers that need to talk to each other. They need to exchange data. And so I need a network in the middle to facilitate that exchange of data. So that's what I need. Now, the network itself can be as large or as small as I need it to be. For example, the most primitive network, if I had PC number one and PC number two and I need to connect them so they could share data, my network could simply be a couple of network interface cards are put into those PCs and then a cable. And that's it. That would be my network. Um, so what am I going to start with? So I, I thought to myself, well, you know, what, what are most people, you know, even if they have no networking knowledge at all and like are, you know, I'm, I was thinking if I was to teach my class to like, you know, my, my dad who is like almost as computer illiterate as they can come, you know, how could I teach it in a way that, that would make sense to him? Well, everybody out there who has a computer knows about bringing up websites, right? If you got a computer, the absolute minimum thing you do is you go to Google or you go to your email provider, whatever it is. So Everybody who has a computer from the age of like six on up knows that you use computers to get to a website. So what's really happening when you go to a, go to a website? Like for example, if I was to ask my dad, hey, sit down and think for a second. When you, when you go and you bring up your browser, now he'd probably scratch his head and say, right there, you said a term I'm not familiar with, browser, what's that? And I'd have to say, okay, you know that you know that thing you, you, that that you see that icon right there, and you click on it, and then it brings up a window, and that shows you your email. That thing that just came up, we call that a web browser. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. So when you bring up that web browser, and you're going to you know whatever it is, Gmail, what do you really think is happening there? And if I was to ask him or my grandma that question, they'd probably say, I don't really know. I just know that I'm getting my email. 
I'd say, okay, so, uh, but you know that you need the internet to be up, right? And they'd say, yes, I need the internet to, everybody's had the experience of having a power outage or something where the internet, the internet goes down and they can't get to their email. Well, technically speaking, that's a misnomer. If you tell someone the internet has gone down, that's like saying that every single household in every single part of the world has just lost electricity because the internet is not one thing, right? The internet is a collection of computers that are all connected via networks. It's a, the internet is a huge spider web of billions, literally billions of computers and tablets and laptops all interconnected to each other via Wi-Fi or networking cables. That's what the internet is. So there's really no way for the internet itself to be down unless our entire earth just blew up because the internet is all over. So when someone says, oh, the internet is down, what that really means is their personal connection to the internet is down. That the connection that their laptop or tablet has to get to this massive network of billions of devices, that connection's not working. Okay, but a lot of people just say, oh, the internet is down. That's fine, you know. So, so you know that you need to connect to the internet to get to a website. Well, what's really happening there? Well, your laptop is talking to another computer. And that other computer is giving you the website. So when you go to Google or INE.com or something, what you're really doing is your computer is talking to another computer. And that other computer has a file that it sends to you which displays as a website, as a web page. Now we call that other computer a web server. So let's, let's, de let's define that a little bit more. So you know, you're, you're sitting at home on your laptop. Normally, what are, what are you? You're, you're a consumer, right? You're receiving stuff. You're receiving your email. You're receiving a website. But is anybody out there on the internet getting anything from your computer? Are you providing a website to them? Are you providing emails to them? Probably not. So what we call a host computer, which would be your laptop, your computer, is receiving services, but you're not giving services to anybody else. So a server would be a specialized computer that's optimized to provide services, to provide files and data to other people. Once again, you know, your laptop at home, you're receiving a bunch of stuff, but chances are, most likely, other people in the world aren't trying to get to your laptop, aren't trying to get information from your laptop, whereas a server, that's exactly what's going on. And because a lot of people are trying to access a server, that means there might be some people out there who have sort of bad intentions, who want to bring the server down or who want to corrupt that information. So a server has to have more security on it to prevent against people trying to attack it or to prevent from people trying to delete its files or something. So that same type of security you could probably have on your laptop, but most likely you don't need it. So yes, a server is definitely going to have more security than a regular host computer. If I was to line up for you on, on this desk right here, a bunch of computing devices, and I said, some of these are host devices that, you know, like my mom and my dad and my wife will use for just like internet browsing and, and web browsing and stuff. And some of these things are servers. Identify for me which is which. You actually wouldn't be able to tell just by physically looking at it. A server doesn't have some physical form factor that you can look at and you can say, ah, because that thing is so big and because it's a certain color and it has certain lights on it, that must be a server. As a matter of fact, my laptop could be a server. If I have you know, the right stuff running on it, if I have the right operating system running on it, I could easily convert my laptop into a server, but it would still look like a laptop. So when I say that my laptop is getting a web page from a server, bring it full circle again, that means that I am talking to another computer that could be in the next room or could be 5,000 miles away. I don't know what that computer looks like, how small or how big it is. I don't know how much memory it has on it or anything else. All I know is that computer is designed to service me. It's designed to give me something. In this case, it's designed to give me a file that has a bunch of graphics and pictures and text in it, which displays as a website. Okay, so in order to connect to that computer, I need a network. So I thought to myself, okay, well, the purpose of this show, like it says here, it's to des design and build a small wired network 
from scratch. So let's start doing that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up a whiteboard right here. Give me one second to, uh, to find one. Okay. Push this over here so we can see it. Okay, so I thought, well, if I'm going to build a network, I should have some host device that wants to receive services from some server. So let's just start putting that in here. I'm going to just draw it in here. So here we will have a host device, which in this case will just be my laptop. You can't see it's, it's basically just beneath your field of vision, but I'm going to use my laptop here as the, as the host device. And I'm going to have some device down here, which will be a web server, because pretty much everybody is familiar with web browsing. So I'll just say web server. Now I stopped right there. When I was, when I was thinking about designing this, I thought, okay, I've got actually two laptops. Um, maybe I could convert one of them into a server, which I could have done, but why make things more complex than they need to be? So I thought, well, instead of just doing all this research to figure out how can I convert my laptop into a server so that it can actually provide a website to my other laptop. This is one advantage of having worked with Cisco networking gear for a long time is when you start working with Cisco gear like the routers and switches and you start learning about the command line and their, their software that's in there, one thing you learn very quickly at the beginning is that Cisco routers and switches have a built-in web server. Not a lot of people use it because it's very slow. It's very, you know, it just, it's just not elegant to use. So most people don't use it, but it's there. So what I'm going to do is, rather than actually finding a server and configuring it to act as a web server, I'm going to use a router that I already have here. So I'll put a little circle right here. And this router will act as my web server. And I'll show you how to, uh, how to uh, make the router do that. Okay, now I need some sort of a network in the middle so these guys can communicate. So this is what I'm going to start with. I just collected a bunch of random equipment that I had around here, and I'll show you what it looks like. Right there. So if you actually look below me, right here sitting next to me is this stuff. I just took a, a snapshot, a picture of it. So let's take a look and see what these are here. Let me bring up uh, some drawing utility so I can draw on this. All right. So what are each of these things? So these things here that I'm drawing a red line to, and let me go ahead and expand this a little bit more. So what I've got here are a total of four routers. So that's a router, that's a router, that's a router, and that's a router. And you can see that these two are the same make and model. They're Cisco 1841 routers. Not that that might mean anything to you. And this is a completely different model of Cisco router, and this is another model of Cisco router. It's just spare parts that I collected from around the, the office here to cobble this network together. And then I've also got, to complete my network, three switches. One, two, and three. Now you can see that right now, the only thing that's happening is I've plugged in the power cords. That's it. So, you know, that's step number one in building your network is to find the power cord, find some electrical outlet, and plug it in. And be careful of this. Now, this is a really small network, right? I've only got, oh, six or seven devices. So I was actually able to just get like a, a, a little power strip that had six or seven outlets in it, plug them all into that, and then plug it into the wall. I wasn't really concerned that this would, you know, trip my circuit breakers or anything because this isn't a lot of stuff. But if you're actually building a real network, right, a, a real network that's significantly larger than this, that's one of the first things you have to start thinking about. If you're a network designer and someone says, okay, here's a large space, um, and I want you to put in here some racks, and then I want you to build a network that's going to serve our office, that's going to serve our building. Well, one of the things you have to consider is, okay, you know, how many devices am I going to need, and how much power are they going to draw? You know, how many electrical outlets am I going to need? Is this room serving enough electricity for all the devices that I need? Another thing you have to consider, 
air conditioning. Um, what you're gonna see, this room right now, unfortunately that I'm in, and you probably have heard this in some of my other videos, is very hot, very warm. There's no ventilation in this room, unfortunately. It doesn't have its own separate air conditioning system. Right now, as I sit here, it's probably literally about 78 or 79 degrees. And once I turn this stuff on, each of these things is gonna start pumping out its own heat. So I'm gonna start sweating like nothing in here. I'm gonna start thinking about taking off my clothes as we do this recording. Uh, don't worry, I won't do it. But yeah, it's gonna go through my head because it's gonna get really hot in here. So when you're designing a network, that's something else you have to think about. If the, if the room, and we typically call that room a data center. A data center is a specialized room that's housing all of your networking gear, all your routers and your switches and probably your servers. So when you're designing that data center, you gotta think about power requirements. Okay, do I have enough power outlets? Uh, are those power outlets supplying the sufficient electrical energy I'm gonna need for everything that's in there? And you gotta think about air conditioning. All this stuff is pumping out heat. Right? If you, buy, if you buy, a lot of people when they're studying for, their, uh, for some sort of networking certification, they think, oh, okay, I'll just go to eBay or something and I'll purchase for myself a bunch of routers or switches, I'll bring them home and I'll set up a little network in my house, like maybe in my bedroom or my office or something and practice. Great idea. I did it myself, a lot of people do that. What I didn't realize when I did that is after I set up my network and I turned it on, after about 10 minutes, my room was like 95 degrees because these things just pump out massive heat. So that's another thing you gotta think about, the heat, and make sure you have enough adequate air conditioning. Uh, that's why I'm gonna try to keep this show rather short so I don't die of uh, dehydration in this room right here. So this is what I'm gonna start with. Nothing's cabled, and we're gonna talk about that. How am I gonna cable it up? Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is, I don't have a picture of it right here, but imagine this is my laptop, and my laptop is gonna connect to one of these switches here. I'll connect it to one of the switch ports. And then I'll make this guy here into my web server. So this router will be my web server. I'm trying to draw this with my mouse right now, so please forgive me. Web server. And then all the devices in the middle will be my network that connects everything together. So you know, I'll have something like this and something like this, 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 and then we'll just, we'll do it as we go along here. So I'm gonna build that up. Okay, uh, so I've defined here the initial set of gear that I have. I've defined my objective, which is to connect my laptop to this so that my laptop can eventually ask for a web page from this router. And once I get that web page displayed, I'll be done. It'll be finished. I'll, got my, I'll have my network completed.